spiritual process is a deeper involvement with life, much deeper than people normally would even imagine. It is, it is not about leaving the surface, it's about leaving the core, going deep down, down to the core, down to the main. That's what spiritual process is all about. The journey of moving from where you are right now into a deeper place, a place with much more understanding, is when you step down. From the surface, you dig down into the core, the core, that which holds it together. That's what spiritual process is about. You cannot go to the core of life unless you are willing to pay attention to detail. Unless you're willing to pay attention to the details of life. Until you do that, mm -mm, there's no way you can get to the core of life. Nothing in this existence will yield to you unless you are willing to pay attention to it. Unless you are willing to pay attention to it. Nothing in this life would yield to you. And when you begin to pay attention to this life, when you begin to pay attention to it, everything in this existence would yield to you. Nothing would be hidden from you. Nothing would be, would be withheld from you. Every single thing would yield to you. All you got to do is to pay enough attention to it. Welcome to Spirit Friday. I get excited every time I get the opportunity to even talk to you, but more so to talk about spirituality and how you can grow your spiritual life. Aquaba, Aquaba, Aquaba. I welcome you to the Melanated Truth. This is the spiritual session. And I, this, listen, this is my speciality, you know. Of all the things I know, of all the things I teach, this right here is what I love to do, spirituality. And my job on every Friday is to bring you a step further than you've ever been. It's not, it's not enough to just know something. It's not enough to just read about it. It is time you, as an individual, start building your spiritual self and start coming into a dimension that, listen, a dimension that would begin to evolutionize your personal life and bring you to a place where all of a sudden everything begins to make sense. You see, in this life, if you are willing to pay enough attention if you are willing to focus your mind on just one thing at a time i mean this is the beginner stage so we want to do it one step at a time and yesterday my video got pulled down so i don't want to say anything on youtube that i can't give details that's why i have my whatsapp numbers and my email addresses in the details in the description so that you can reach out to me but when you begin to pay attention to anything at all in this world, to anything at all in this dimension, when you give it enough focus, enough attention, I'm telling you, that thing would yield to you. That thing would manifest. It's not easy to do it though. All you got to do is to learn to spend a minute. Just start for one minute. When you start from one minute, keep increasing it. If you can go one minute straight, with no interaction if you go if you can go one minute straight with no interruption with nobody coming to distract you just sit there think about one thing for one whole minute with no instruction with no distraction after a minute you move to two you move to five you move to ten you move to fifteen you move to thirty by the time you get to one hour of absolute focus on one particular thing not a single thing will be withheld from you. I don't want to go any further without involving the powers that be in the spirit of our fathers. And I can't really teach you on YouTube. Like I said, they, they're pulling down videos. So um, contact me personally and I'll show you certain things. But 
because we are dealing with spirit fridays i gotta i gotta pray and i gotta pray in the local dialect in the local language that is the best way to pray and that is the quickest way to get access in the divine so i'm gonna pray and call on the powers that be to be with us as we go on this journey this friday Odumankuma now of age, I am a sending. It took me all boy, baby man, home by the sending. To me, all gana home by the sending. To me, all boy, I'm an amana. It be before what's in the mean, I am sending. Yen an animal way, you won't be a big parker, and sending. So for pain, I'm not you, and sending you. I saw for pain for ah, what that I'm an amana do, what that gana, baby man do, what that a busier piano, what that. A cool piano, what that brings something piano, and you bring essence and one jessa. And then paying far, what do you name him? What do one quatuor? My young suable to prependria ye to me, yer to see ya, more be ye in a one jessa. I don't worship me and I'm paying for what's the one name, and paying for way and way won't be a good and none no ma. We could in some man do a warble one bra, and you bring as in a bono, yes, and say one jessa. Yeah, don't want to say. Don't want to call our boy and home. Yes, right? Don't call our own boy and I'm genuine. One boy and it's a same one. One call our own Z and name him. Young Kudum Pen Pen Dry Young Hunde and Para. See, say, you could be beer. Yen and no man cassa. What it seeing? No, what she saying? What boy and home and what boy and a bodum Pen Pen Dry to moon there and Para. No corny. No corner quandy, near Nansen, no corner quandy. Yes, one jinsa. And you bring on Kayon, or may I'm contented. O be or shame be a on ya, yes, say be a woman, I yes, sir. O be or shame be on ya ba, or man ba. O be or shame on ya quamboy, woman quamboy. O be or shame on ya quaint to be a one word, not to quan could be beer or ye dare, or drew banabra. Yes, ro. Diane say ye're pretty able to soon soon me. One boy, was ye a yimkan? Omi yanko du sun sun pem, sun sun pa mu, baby pa, yan kre hiya do bodu. Yan me yasa mon wad, yasi, asida, asida, asida. Amen, amen, amen. So I just pray in our local dialect to welcome the powers that be. First and foremost, I give praise to the Creator. For giving us this day, this amazing day, and everything that is in it. I give thanks to the Mother Earth. I give thanks to the powers that be, the powers of the air, the powers of the sea, the powers of the earth, the powers of the fiery dimension. I give powers to the the beings that govern Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I also give praise to our fathers who paved the way for us to make it this far. I paved the way for your fathers, your personal fathers, that they should speak to you and show you if, it, if by any chance you have missed the way, they should direct you back to the right place, back to the truth. I also give thanks to all the elders that have moved on to the next dimension, asking them to help us on our quest to go deeper. And I give praise to everybody that's watching that whatever you are desiring, whatever you require, that the answers will show up by way of dreams or revelation that you will receive from the divine realms. This was the prayer I prayed. And I can only pray this since we are indeed on the spiritual Friday. We need to understand that most of the principles that governs most religious and spiritual movements across the face of the earth all came 
from Africa. There's not a single spiritual movement or religious movement or body that exists on the face of this dimension or in the face of this existence without an African influence. Our spirituality is the bedrock, is the foundation of every other spirituality that is out there. Your spirituality, my spirituality, the spirituality of our fathers. And then this is, I mean, this is basic knowledge, right? This is common sense. That if everything else started with our fathers, how then will spirituality start somewhere else? Do you get what I'm saying? If everything that exists started with our fathers, came into existence through our fathers, how then does one, the major aspect of it, come from somewhere else? So it doesn't even make sense when you think about it in that dimension. That is why you need to understand and know and love the spirituality of your fathers, what your fathers knew, what your fathers practiced is so important that you know it. The truth of the matter is the reason why most people dare not even want to discuss our spirituality or have the conversation of the spirituality of our fathers is that majority of people have no idea the spirituality of our fathers. Most of them, most people don't really understand what our fathers did. Then there is the fear of what our fathers did because a lot of people are too scared because certain groups of people have tried as much as possible to demonize the spirituality of our fathers. The only way their spirituality and their movement, as a matter of fact, there's no other spirituality that exists on the face of this earth aside that which came from our fathers. Every other thing that exists out there is forgery. It's a lie. It's not really true. It's come. It's a cup. It's, it's copycat. It's, it's a carbon copy. It's coming from the original spirituality. So therefore, there is only one spirituality. Anybody else telling you there's a spirituality of anybody or coming from anywhere or anywhere in this realm is a lie. It's lying. The reason being that I said a few minutes ago, the original cannot copy the counterfeit. That which started cannot copy that which is following. It's always the one that started that everybody else copies from. So as a matter of there's only one spirituality, but there are diverse, diluted forms of spirituality out there in religious movement. So spirituality is actually coming from your roots, from our, my roots. We are naturally in tuned person. We are naturally spiritual person. One of the signs that you can know that you are indeed a spiritual person is the sound waves, the sound, the sound. For example, one of the biggest sound waves in the realms of the spirit is the um, um, um sound. This um sound is resounds from our drums, from the bass of our drums. That is why naturally, because this um is transpiring, transpiring in the realms of the spirit and it's an air wave that is a wave, it's a sound wave that is moving in the realms of the spirit and its base is established in you. That is why when you hear a beat, you move to the beat, you move to the rhythm of the beat. That is why you never, never necessarily go off beat no matter how bad you suck at dancing sorry for my language but no matter how bad you suck at dan i said it again you suck i said it again at dancing you would never skip a beat unlike many other people that when we play music too you would find them going all over the place because they don't have rhythm rhythm is coming from the sound of the realms of the spirit the sound of the most high so naturally we are built this way we are built in a way that we would always flow we would always flow to the rhythm of the sounds of the spirit that is why easily we flow whenever the music starts playing people don't talk about our spirituality simply because they are afraid and also because of the prejudice that is out there that is shaming our spirituality then we have the competitions where they always try to demonize what our fathers had so that theirs will strive. The only way theirs will thrive is that they have to demonize that of our fathers so that they can ride on the fame of that which our fathers had. That is why oftentimes I prefer to move away from the term African spirituality and just stick with spirituality because the term African spirituality is a bit derogatory. 
So I just want to call it spirituality. It's just like saying the African air. What is the African air? It's just like saying the African water. What is? It's just water. It's just air. It's just fire. It's just earth. Regardless of where you are, you're still on the earth. So you get why I prefer to just stick with spirituality instead of saying a thing like African spirituality. In spirituality, what we call as the world is not just what we see with our physical eyes. Our world, when we come into spirituality, is not just what your two eyes can see. It goes beyond these two eyes. It goes beyond the circumference of your eyes or the corners of your eyes. Our spirituality, every time we talk about the world, we are talking about a dwell factor. We talk about a dwell factor, something that exists in both mirrors. In the reflective side and in the one that is reflecting the reflective side. Do you get what I'm saying? So there's a constant interaction between these two realms, these two dimensions. Remember, I just said our spirituality, when we talk, when we talk about a world, we mean a dual world. That the world that which we can see with our physical eyes, and the world that we cannot see with our physical eyes. Whenever we, whenever we talk about our spirituality, we are talking about an intangible world and a world that is tangible, a world that, is, that can be explained. So these two worlds is what exists to form the world that we are. This shouldn't be too hard to understand because even you as an individual, when you look at yourself, you evidently see that you have a physical form, right? But within this physical form, you can also feel there's another, there's another you that sits in this physical form. That you cannot be seen by anybody. That you cannot be touched by anybody. But you can evidently feel that there's a side of you that exists within you that this physical form helps to express it. So, for example, let me show you something. When just say ah, uh, just, just just do it. Ah, uh, how did you feel? When you okay, maybe your mind didn't go on it. Let's do it again. Ah, uh, how did you feel? You uh, maybe you're still not getting it, but let me explain to you what you feel. When you begin to say the ah, you f the first ah, you just do ah, ah. You f the first sound you hear, you would think the sound is, is from the outside. But when you sustain the ah, you would realize that the sound keeps going deeper. And all of a sudden, you begin to feel that there's a deeper sound that is coming from within you. And within few seconds, you begin to lose focus on the sound that is on the outside. And your whole concentration will now come to the sound that is on the inside, which resounded in your head and coming from your chest areas. So let's do it one more time. Uh... Can you feel the sound? So though there's a physical presence, you also feel that there's another being, another force that sits, sits within you, that stays within you, that is intangible. Do you know what I mean? That cannot be explained. But it's inside. You know it is there. You know it exists. You know it stays within you. You know it is that which allows you to move to and fro, but you just can't touch it. Are you with me? This is an aspect of you that Though we know it very much exists, and though we know that is basically the reason why we move to and fro, we just don't know how it works. And more attention or much attention is not paid to it to study how this version of you really works. Does it eat? Does it sleep? Does it wake up? Is it always up? Does it get tired? Does it get weak? Does it get sick? These are basic questions that we have never asked that which exists within us. Because majority of the time, our focus 
is on this physical realm, this physical existence. But so long as our focus remains here, there is no way we would understand how this thing that which lives within us and though we very much know it exists, we never understand it. Because part of knowing how this thing that lives within us work is losing consciousness, consciousness of this outer vessel, outer shell. So this thing is the spark that brings you into existence. This thing that lives in you, the real you that lives in you is the spark that brings you. Yeah, I'm saying the real you. That's too far ahead. Let me stay here. Let me still remain with this thing that exists within you. That is the spark that brings you into existence. That is the spark that makes you become alive. Some call it consciousness. Some call it the breath of life. Some call it the spirit of man. But regardless of how you want to interpret it and how you want to call it, this thing exists in you and this thing abides in you. If you have your Bible by you, I, I want you to open up and turn to Job 32 8. I want to use the, listen, the Bible is the foundation of your studies, especially most of you that are not close to elders who also know spirituality or understand where they are coming from as well. The basis of your studies would always be the Bible. After you are you are through the spirit, or after you come out or you discover everything you need to know about the spirituality in the Bible, all of a sudden you begin to move into a dimension where everything you know is now not just coming from the Bible, but is flowing from the divine. So let's get into our Bibles and let's go to Job 32 verses 8. Job 32 verses 8, and let me read. But there is a spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding so there's a spirit but there's a spirit in man the breath of the almighty the inspiration of the almighty the breath of the almighty is that which gives them understanding but there's a spirit in man meaning for you to have understanding the only place that you would get this understanding is not your circles it's not your canality it's not your flesh it's not that which evolves around you but understanding sits within you that is why often i say that listen if you are hoping to get understanding through books and documents that men have written down then you would never get understanding because understanding sits within you understanding operates within you understanding works within you understanding does not exist in your physical dimension so if you are trying to understand a spiritual person from a physical dimension then you would always make a mistake because that understanding will never come to you because you are paying attention to your outer selves why and while understanding is sitting on your inner shell waiting for you to discover it but there's a spirit in man but the, you see the, a book like the book of job goes beyond genesis because it was written before genesis so a book like a book, the book of job has so many depth and maturity in spirit that you will never find anywhere else in the scriptures he said but there's a spirit that's seated in man Already, Job is trying to make you understand the duality of every man. The duality. Don't forget this. Because for you to understand the dynamisms of this existence, you need to first understand what is going on on the inside of you. Let's look at Proverbs 20, 27. Let me read from there. It says, Proverbs 20, 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Most High, searching all the inward part of the belly mm. the spirit of the man is the candle ha. meaning for the divine to download anything within you it is not that which you would read outside that is why i keep saying our fathers did not need a book to understand spirituality because your spirit that sits in you 
is that light, is that which connects to the Most High, is that which connects to the Creator, is the conduit to which the Creator transcends into and begin to revelate things to you. And all of a sudden, things that you have never read in any book begins to drop in your mind. That is why I said, for you to understand spirituality, you need to come to this place where you pay attention attention to the inside you think you focus you meditate you spend time just to be quiet and sit in the place of quietness the minute you keep reading you keep depending on books you keep trusting in your flesh and so long as you trust in your flesh you would never receive from the light that is sitting in you which is your spirit so whichever way you want to call it whether spirit consciousness the breath of life all that you need to understand, this version of you, this aspect of you, this, this dwell side of you or the other part of you has never been seen by any naked eyes. When I say naked eyes, all that I'm trying to say has never been seen by any physical side. So let me try to make you understand. When you have a dream, which part of you do you think is moving, acting, sleeping, walking, eating in a dream. Mm. Now you are understanding it. You are understanding the duality of you. You are not just this. Hey, hey, I know. There's another version of you. Let me show you something. Have you ever had a dream that you were sick in a dream before? When you have a dream... And in the dream, you feel like you are sick, you are weak. You need prayer. You need to be prayed for. Because that aspect of you does not get sick. It's not supposed to be sick. That aspect of you is never weak. It's never tattered. Listen, that aspect of you is the strong version of you, the strong side of you. So in as much as this physical side can be weak and sick and, and broken, that aspect of you is always strong. That is why when you have a dream, you are always beating up people. You're always running away from people. You always have enough strength to do whatever you want to do. Because why? That is the strength or the strong side of you. That is your strength. That is the light of the divine realm, the creator in you. So let's come to this place. When you die, or let me rephrase it. Have you ever seen anybody dead? And they said, oh, at the funeral, they collected this memory. Here is his memory. Have you ever seen that before? Have you ever heard that? Oh, so, so I've, I've collected the memory of my father, my mother, my deceased fellow. I've collected it and the memory is sitting right here. Listen, that side of you is that which is containing everything that you are. So if that which is containing everything you are cannot be collected by any physical being, any physical presence, that should tell you that nobody has the power to touch you. All that they can do is to touch this physical essence, this physical body. That is all they can do. So when anybody threatens your life and say, I'm going to kill you, you better laugh and dance. Because that person cannot do nothing. That is what they say. Be afraid of who that can that which can be afraid of that which can be afraid of that which can kill both that which is in you and this physical side. But anybody else that only threatens your physical side, you've got nothing to worry about. That is why you don't gotta be afraid of anything. Because if you die today. It's just your physical side that is dying. The you cannot be touched by anybody, cannot be collected by anybody, cannot be taken by anybody. Your memory moves on. And that is the real you. And this you is sitting in you with all that information that is got. All the information it got it from your father's father's father before they came into this dimension. And the system you came, the system you came to meet, the system that governs your society or the system that we have in our society today is the reason why you lost that data that you came into this dimension with. Now, the minute you come into knowledge, awakening, 
all of a sudden you begin to remember things and things begin to make sense to you. I see if you have a double life. No, no, no. Because you are coming from somewhere and you brought information, you brought data into this realm. That is why we connect to our fathers because sometimes we just forget, you know, and they don't forget. They have moved on to the next dimension. They are not dead. It's only your physical self that can die. That is why I keep saying, you will never die. This body is going to decay and it's going to go down to the earth from whence it came from. But your spirit self that came from the creator does not die. That is why our fathers are not dead. That is why our ancestors are not dead. That is why up to date, somebody can call us off a pain and notching and his spirit will still manifest and show up and do stuff because his spirit is not dead. It's somebody getting me. Listen, you better capture everything you can learn now because they are tearing down videos and shutting down videos. Every, sorry, very soon, I want to start something on zoom on sunday evenings that i can address your questions okay i'm going to start soon i know it's a lot of work that i'm doing but i'll fix that that there that on that platform we can talk about anything okay let's look at this let's look at ecclesiastes 3 21 let's read it let's read i want to show you something let's read it who knoweth the spirit of a man that goeth upwards Ooh. Who knoweth the spirit of a man that goeth upwards? The spirit of the beast that goeth downwards to the earth. Did you understand it? This flesh is considered the beast. The spirit of a man is that which stays within the man. So therefore, this body is going down earth, back to the earth from whence it came from because it is out of this earth that your body came from. So when you die, this body is going, but the spirit of the man is moving upwards. It's, it's moving up the, up the ladder. It's moving upwards. It's moving up to the next dimension while your body goes down. Are you getting it, somebody? Let's check Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. It says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Ooh, this is beautiful. As it what? What? So the earth that you walk upon, that you disrespect, is you. You came from the earth. So whenever you disrespect the earth, you are disrespecting your own self and the body that you carry. Hence, the reason why I call on the mother earth as I see ya. When I'm calling on the mother earth, I know what I'm saying. You don't know it because you were not taught these things. But I know I am calling the mother that gave her this flesh to me. That brought me this body. That is hosting me. This body was given to me by the mother earth. When somebody gives you a gift, don't you appreciate it? So every time I pick up my drink and I pour my libation onto the earth and onto a stone when i pour my liquor my libation onto the stone this stone and this stone is connecting back to the earth because this one stone also came back from the earth right and the liquor goes down into the earth the water of it sinks down the spirit of the liquor goes upwards part of your body goes down the other aspect of your body goes upwards so this liquor contains both the flesh and the spirit that is why this liquor is called the spirit it's called spirit do you got any spirit to drink have you ever wondered why this is called spirit because when you pour it to the ground part of it that is water goes to the ground and the other part of it that is spirit goes to the ground. You are just offering yourself as a sacrifice. That is why when you die, you go down into the earth and your spirit, just like the liquor when you are pouring libation, goes back to the heavens. The dimensions, that's what I mean, the seven dimensions, which the most I told me from the beginning, everybody needs to get to this dimension and understand the principles of this dimension. When you understand it, ooh, your life is amazing. Ooh. Are you following me? Let's look at Genesis 
Genesis 1, 2. I want to stay here. I don't want to go any further. Mm. I want to go. Let's see. Let me upload this and see that they don't shut this down. Then I can go deeper, okay? Because I don't want to record a whole long video and they will shut it down. So let's look at something. Genesis 2, 8. Mind you, I'm using the scriptures as a basis for you. I don't really need it. But as a basis for you, for all of us to come to this common ground. That everything I'm saying is not made up. It is the same like I told you. I think our spirituality is that which supports every other religion out there. That is why everything I'm saying can be found in your scriptures. Because what? They adapted it from our spirituality. Let me go down. Genesis 2.8. Genesis 2.8 says what? The Most High planted... Let's go to Genesis 2 7. Genesis 2 7. Genesis 2 7 says what? The Most High formed man out of the dust. Remember, Ecclesiastes said we go back to the dust, right? Out of the ground and breathed through the nostril of man the breath of life. And man became a living being. Woo! <laughs> Listen. And breathed through the nostril of man and the man became a living being. But the man was formed out of the dust. So the mother earth gave flesh to the man. The living being was given flesh to become a human being. So you are a being that has been given a body to limit you to stay here on this earth. The minute, listen, this body is the only reason why you remain on this ground. The minute you leave this body, this ground, this earth, this dimension cannot take you. Automatically, you get sink, you get, you just sucked into the next dimension, which is the seventh dimension. Listen, everything I'm doing, everything I'm teaching you, our fathers, yen na nanum, our fathers simply means yen na nanum. So when I say yen na nanum, I'm simply saying our fathers. Yen na nanum knew this. Yen na nanum knew this, our fathers knew this. They didn't need to wait for the Bible, for the Bible to tell them that they came from the earth. Our fathers didn't need the Bible to tell them they came from a dimension and the mother earth gave them clothes to be able to walk in this physical existence. That is why our fathers were pouring libations all the time. That is why every patriot in the scripture also poured libations. I want to leave you here. This is Spirit Friday. My assignment is to teach you to come into spirituality. And this beautiful spirituality is beautiful. That is a place you would want to be. Stay blessed. Have a great night. If you have any questions, please. I don't want to do a lot of answers on on YouTube. So, because they are pulling out stuff. So, please, forward it either to the email or my WhatsApp number. If you don't have the WhatsApp app, please download the WhatsApp app. And I'm saying, very soon, I will come on Zoom and answer every question. Zoom, I can say anything. Then you would actually know the plans that we have for our people, for our family. We can really talk on Zoom. Have a great weekend. This is Spirit Friday. Don't forget, Sunday, I come your way with Identity Sunday. I love you. I love you guys. We are family. We're going to do amazing things together. Stay blessed.